Python to easily investigate your uh, Moodle data. So we have all this Moodle data and we want to improve learner outcomes, we want to improve retention, we want to increase uh, student satisfaction. Python, I think, I'm going to argue is a, a good tool to use. It's open source, it's easy to use and read, it has good documentation, and there's a large number of scientific libraries like NumPy and SciPy. Pandas is the Python data analysis library. It's also an open source library, easy to use data structures, which I hope to show you. Hi, very high performance uh, and good documentation, and I've inc included the, the link there. One of the ways to interact with uh, Python is to use the Jupyter Notebook and IPython. They allow for interactive development. They uh, can contain live code and equations and visualizations and explanatory text all in one. So you could use a notebook to teach someone else how to do what, what you've accomplished. You can share notebooks. Um, you can share notebooks through uh, uh, GitHub and maybe uh, some other people that are interested with me can help get that, uh, get a community going there. Um, Anaconda is an easy way to get Python and Pandas onto your computer. It's multi-platform. It's a stand, it could be a standard platform for this community so that we all have the same version of Pandas and so that it's not a, a some difference in Python or Pandas leading to the, the weirdness that we're seeing. And then Moodle Adminer or Adminer is it's ba based on Adminer, and um, it's a plugin for Moodle. It supports MySQL, Postgres SQL, Oracle, MS SQL. It makes it very easy to download data. And why do we want to uh, download data? It minimizes impact on the live system, and then you really want to do data analysis on a static data set. If the data is always changing you're not really doing anal uh, 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 analysis. Um, in, but the one thing is with Moodle ad, ad, Adminer, you have to be a Moodle admin to use it. And if you're a faculty member, you can download data directly from Moodle. You can download uh, uh, from the uh, Moodle logs, you can download from uh, quiz results. And, and the example I'm going to work with is going to be data that was is downloaded from a uh, from a quiz. And this is what it looks like to be working in a Jupyter notebook. It runs uh, on, on a server or on your notebook or on your desktop. And the interface is a web browser. And to start using pandas, it's just as simple as import pandas as pd. So then I can everything with PD is pandas now. And then some of this other stuff here is to make the graph show up nice. And then the quiz A equal, equals, the, equals that next statement. I've just loaded from my CSV file the quiz data that I've just downloaded. It's that easy. And then if I were to look at what quiz A actually is, I've cleaned this up a little bit because when you download the data, uh, you get uh, name and email and other things in there, and you don't. I, I mean, you don't want to be sharing that with everyone, and so I've I've uh, cleaned that stuff up. And it's very easy to do. Pandas is intuitive. If I <coughs> after I get good at this and I upload, I can just use Quiz A head to see that oh yes, things imported correctly, and I don't have student names. Pandas does the work for you. I just have to, I haven't done anything. I've just uploaded the data and I can get the count, the mean, the standard deviation, and uh, the breakdown in quartiles. I can look at the data for everyone that has a score greater than 85, for instance. Very easy to do. And it looks sensible. I mean, if, if you just look at that, you could guess that that's maybe what that's doing. It's very easy to do plots. Now, this isn't the correct plot, plot for this data. But I just wanted to show you that you could just just simply do a plot. With a little more work, you can do a scatter plot. And this is time in seconds from when the quiz opened and when they took it, it was open for like a two and a half to three days, and the grade. And I think you can already see that maybe, I mean, I, you know, you'd have to actually run stats to know, but 
visually it looks like ah, better grades on the first day. It's spread out a little bit more on the second day and some lower grades. We're still getting some good, but lower. And that last day, we still got good grades, but we also see some of the worst grades. Here's the histogram of that. I can also split things into the last day versus the, uh, the first days. And if you look very closely at this, you can see the mean. The minimum is different. The means are different. Again, you'd want to run real statistics to, to, do, to do an analysis. But right now, we're just looking to see if this is an interesting question worth investigating. And you could do all that real statistics using uh, pandas. Here's a histogram of that information. And then um, here's the, uh, the final few hours. And you can see that's where we do have some good grades. But when you're doing, working with this data, ethics are involved. Are you looking at data to improve your teaching? Are you doing research? You really should run it by your institutional review board and keep your data safe and clean your data, remove names and all that kind of stuff. What is my analysis picking up on? This is uh, audience participation. Can you see a difference between these two rows here? Anyone? So this was submitted to ARXIV uh, as a, uh, it's an open source place to submit journals. And the argument is the top row are criminals, and they were wanted for mugshots. And it, uh, these weren't mugshots; these were driver's license photos. But they use these photos to publish them on wanted posters. And then these are the innocent people below. But it, to me, and what, and and this is from uh, someone else actually analyzed this, it, it, you know, picked apart the paper and picked up on this. The top row has frowns, and the bottom row has smiles. So, is the machine learning picking up on frowns and smiles, or criminals and non-criminals? Can we really look at pictures? So, the, the, I, I, anyone that does this kind of stuff, look at this ar article. Article: Physiognomy is new clothes. And I think it will open your idea to the misuse of data. Overfitting. The machine is able to minimize the right answers and doesn't generalize. That's essentially what overfitting is. And then, are we picking up on stereotypes? Smiling versus frowning. Trustworthy versus untrustworthy. You know, and machines are very good at finding patterns that aren't there. This is a plate of spaghetti with the image you know, produced by Deep Dream looking for dog faces. And we can do that same thing. Machines just help speed up the process. So be very ethical examining data. Science really does work if you're careful. Recognize and control for your biases and don't stretch your conclusions. And then this is the last one. Am I doing research? Or am I just looking for potential lines of inquiry? Or am I looking for ideas for course improvement? You know, think about what you're doing. Research really needs to be done through your IR board and done ethically. And now I'm open for questions. I think it was very easy to do. It, if you look at the documentation and play around and don't get frustrated with your first wrong answer, you could figure out how to how to do this stuff too. Okay. Not yet. That's what I'm looking to gain to gain in, in interest. To okay. So get we should get together and think about how we want to do it. It's in the I am the king. Um, so, f I mean, so far, nothing like earth-shaking. People turning in things late are doing, are, are doing worse. People working in the middle of the night are, are, doing, are doing worse. Um, the number of clicks, not surprisingly, and of course, is not entirely related to, to grades. But if you can analyze 
if there's long gaps between interaction, there's something there. But it's not always that one. It's really hard to tease out clicks and and stuff because someone could have just downloaded everything out of the course from the get go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I think that's the thing is that you do need to be real careful, and sometimes you might want to get a hold of someone at your institution that is a statistician because there's the right type of test. When you, when you do a histogram, there's the right number of bins for your data. There, there are rules, and like if you were going to submit something to publication, that journal would would know what the right answer is and would weed out you if you're not if you're not following the rules. So um, I will, you know, like avail myself of of that because I, I think it's very important to do things the the, the right the right way. And it, you, and some people have invested a lot of time and figured it out the right way for some some for certain data sets. Cool. Michael.